friends, I'm Liz Driscoll with North Carolina Cooperative Extension and 4-H and today we're going to find out what kind of soil you have. Knowing what kind of soil you have lets you know if you want to, you could plant a vegetable garden, build a house, or do whatever you want with your soil. So before we really dig in, you need to know that soil has four different parts. The first part is weathered rock, rock broken down over time by rain, temperature, microorganism, other things, and it breaks it down into three sized soil particles. The first one is sand. If you've ever built a sand castle in a sandbox or at the beach, you know that when you feel sand, it's really gritty, it feels like table salt. The next type of soil particle we have is silt. I know that I have some silt in my vegetable garden and when I feel my vegetable garden soil, it feels so smooth and silky. Now I want you to pause this video right now and go to your pantry and find a little bit of flour. Feel that flour, feel how smooth it is. That's exactly what silt feels like. The last soil particle we have is the smallest. It's clay. Clay is really tiny. Have you ever been out after a rain in your rain boots and you stomp into a bunch of clay and it sticks to your boots? That's exactly what clay is. It's really sticky. So that's enough for us to know that sand is gritty, silt can be really smooth and silky like flour, and clay is really sticky. But soil scientists have another test that they do called making a soil ribbon. And I love this because we get to get dirty. So what I want you to do is pause again, grab your soil sample, and come back with a water bottle and your soil and maybe a rag so that you can clean your fingers. So we're gonna start with my first soil sample, which is some clay. Oh, excuse me, which is sand. We're gonna start with my first soil sample, which is sand. So you're gonna take your water bottle, spray, your soil sample so that it's nice and moist. If it gets too wet, you can just add a little bit of soil back to your sample. If it's too dry, you can add some more water. I have a little bit of a rock in there. I'm gonna take that out. Now, I want you to squeeze your soil sample into a ball. Does it stay in the ball? This one looks like it does. Now throw it up in the air and it kind of falls apart, doesn't it? A little bit, not totally. The next thing we're gonna do is try to make that ribbon. So I'm going to take my sample and I'm going to use my thumb and I'm going to push it over my pointer finger. Does that stay together? No, it just falls apart and that's what sand does. It just falls apart when you try um, to make a ribbon out of it. The next sample we're going to do is we're going to go to my vegetable garden soil and it's nice and dark colored from all the organic matter over the years. I'm going to take another sample about the size of an egg and I'm going to begin to moisten it. This is messy business, this soil ribboning. All right. Sometimes you have to work it in a little bit, get it nice and moist and evenly throughout. Maybe add just a little bit more. All right. Now take your sample and again, we're going to try to push this with our thumb across our pointer finger. There we go. Can you see that? That forms just a little bit of a ribbon, but if I try to go any farther, it falls, kind of falls apart, breaks apart. So we know that there is um, a little sand in there. I can feel some tiny bits of grit, but we know it's um, kind of sticking together. And so there's probably a little bit of clay in there. I also can feel how smooth it is, so I know there's silt. So this is probably a combination of all three, sand, silt, and clay, and it makes what's called a loam, which is great for vegetable gardening. All right. The next sample we have, you're looking at the red color, and you might think that it's clay. You will be right, but I'll show you in just a minute. But that red color, remember, is from iron. So I'm going to take my sample. I got this from the woods the other day. Add some water to it. Really work it in. Making a big mess already. Sometimes clay gets pretty dry, so you might have to kind of mush it around a little bit in your hand. Oh, I feel another rock in this one too. Take that rock out. All right. Once you think it's nice and moist, you're going to take it and you're going to push it 
across. Ah, you see how sticky that is? See how that sticks to my finger? So sticky that I can't even make a ribbon out of it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more soil to it to dry it off. Sometimes when you're working with clay, um, that stickiness is just because you're not working that moisture all the way in. And then sometimes your hand is so sticky you can't make a ribbon, so you can take a rag and wipe your hand off. Don't wipe your pants or you might get in trouble with your parent. All right, now take this, and now we're gonna make a ribbon. So we're gonna push that across my finger. Do you see how long that ribbon is? That's a pretty long ribbon. So clay has that kind of property where it can make a nice long ribbon. So pause this and take your soil sample and figure out what you have. Can, does your soil fall apart when you try to make a ribbon? Does it make kind of a, um, a short ribbon? Maybe it's a loam or has um, quite a bit of silt in it? Or can you make a really long ribbon and maybe it's some type of clayey soil? Use the handout called Soil Texture by Feel and follow the step-by-step -step instructions to help you make a soil ribbon and find out exactly what kind of soil you have. So, after you do that, I want you to take a picture, upload it so that you can earn your Super Soil Sleuth badge and tell us what you think it is. And then from there, in the next couple of activities, now that we know we might have a clay soil or loamy soil, we'll figure out exactly um, how we can use it. So have fun, get dirty, and let us know what you find.